Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to another soggy day in Norfolk. Today, we're looking at a keyboard. For many people, keyboard shortcuts are an essential way of working. But to others, they're a bit of a mystery that require far too much work to get into. To that second group of people, the mouse is king and they find themselves increasingly absorbed into that single linear way of working. And there's nothing wrong in that, except perhaps a bit of RSI and kind of a hunching of the shoulders. But I would suggest that in the mystery of the keyboard shortcut, there's actually a faster, better, more open way of working and one that resists the urge to filter through menus and becoming tensely focused on some single action. Once discovered, you'll be amazed at how it can sort of open you up. It releases you from the cage of the mouse and allows you to sit back and access and engage more with your software in a more open and relaxed way. And you suddenly find something for your left hand to do. So if you're a visual person and you want to find a, a new and better, faster way of working and you can't remember all of the shortcuts from the manual, then I can highly recommend checking out Editor's Keys for a range of keyboards that are festooned with shortcuts ready to go for your chosen door. I've got some history with keyboard shortcuts. Back in 2000 or something, we were designing them for the Carillon Audio Systems and we used to give a sheet of stickers away free with every system, detailing all of the shortcuts for things like Cubase, Sonar, Pro Tools, Logic at the time, and that kind of stuff. And I would spend hours working out these shortcuts and detailing exactly what they needed to be. We color coded everything so you could use all the modifiers or the shift and control keys to change different shortcuts and all of those were detailed painstakingly on each individual key and in our intention to lay out absolutely every shortcut we could possibly find it did get a bit crowded in there so I'm very familiar with the task and the challenges involved in creating keyboard shortcuts for a shortcut keyboard a company called Logic Keyboard had essentially cornered the market on these sorts of things until very recently and then editors keys seemed to come along and undercut them by a huge amount while still retaining the same kind of level of quality. Editors' keys have expanded the range of door software that they support and have now just introduced an illuminated backlit version. And that's what I'm gonna look at today. So just a quick look here then, as you can see, it really is getting soaking wet out here. So I'll keep this brief. The packaging is awesome. Why does it need to have good packaging? I've no idea, but it's very, very impressive, colorful little box. And inside we have the keyboard shortcut keyboard. This one is for Persona Studio One, so that's what I'm reviewing, a backlit, illuminated editor's keys shortcut keyboard for Persona Studio One. <sighs> Let's get to it. So here we are in situ then. Here she blows right here. I've got Studio One loaded up, of course, all ready to go. See, I know the space bar already. I've kind of worked that one out. It even says play stop on here. Anyway, the feel of the keyboard is a bit different, actually. There's no sculpting like you get on keys on a regular keyboard. They're flat entirely, although they're textured or rough on the top. The, the stickers or the printing or whatever it is that's on top of the keys um, has a sort of resistance to it. It's somewhat chunky, I suppose, but, but not really in a bad way. So you've got quite a bit of travel there, but also a firm springiness coming back at your fingers. You know, you really know that you've pressed a key, which when using shortcuts in uh, indoor software, you're, you're working very intentionally. You are trying to find a key to do something particular. And so knowing that you've pressed that, having a really good amount of feedback that you've pressed that key, I think is a really important thing. And some keyboards can be you know, so light that you hardly even know you've pressed anything. Keyboards tend to get thrown in when you buy the computer, so they're worth like about three quid. And so we're completely used to using a kind of a, a rubbish and poor typing experience. However, if you throw sort of 30 to 50 quid at 
buying a keyboard, you can actually revolutionize your computing experience. I mean, I use this Logitech Premium keyboard, which cost about that much, and it has a much more of a sort of an ultrabook feel to it. It's very light, very sort of tap tap lappy lappy, very tap tap laptop like, which suits me very well. But this is more chunky than that, not in a sort of an old fashioned plastic way, but in a in a good way. It's heavy. It's intentional. As I say, it allows you to really know that you've pressed something. Um, so it's not as delicate as the keyboard I'm used to, but I'm kind of putting that forward as a positive. The slimness of it. Can you see that how slim that is? Is pretty good. And also it's rigidity. Mm, mm, it's pretty good. I mean, it's made, it is made of plastic and you can see the, the shininess that's going to very quickly pick up fingerprints and dust, but never mind, eh? But it's certainly rigid and firm enough to withstand kind of a regular pounding. But what we really want to see is the backlighting. That's the exciting thing. Let's turn the lights on. Bing! Can you see that? Yeah, perhaps not as immediately impressive as you thought. The on off switch for this is hidden behind the, uh, you know, that button that we use all the time, the scroll lock, whatever that, that's for, we don't really remember anymore. So that on, off, off, on, on, off, on, on, on. Because of sort of the coloring on top of the keyboard, the light doesn't really shine through under sort of normal lighting. So instead the keys kind of stand a little bit proud of the keyboard and so you can see the LEDs beneath and they shine through. They also reflect on the white body of the keys very, very well. This also kind of has the effect of showing up all the dust and crap that tends to accumulate behind the keys. And it also highlights sort of the, the unfinished nature of the body of the keys because they're not polished or anything and they're sort of bits of uh, rough edges and paint and stuff sort of stuck down there, but that's being really picky and it's only there because suddenly you can see it through the illumination. But of course normal lighting is not the point. Haha, -ha, there we go. See that is a bit more like it. Can you see that now? Boom. Disco, 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 disco. So under these sort of lighting conditions, you can see the full effect of the keyboard and it's much more interesting. And of course, now the light is shining through the keys. I mean, some of the colors work better than others. I mean, the, the dark reds and the dark blues here are a little harder to read, but overall it is absolutely doing what it's supposed to do, giving you an illuminated keyboard, showing the shortcuts, for Studio One, and it does it beautifully. It's very sort of Starship Enterprise. Oh. Anyway, I'm not sure that anyone really sort of does work in this kind of level of light. I don't know. But anyway, let's turn the lights back on because what we're interested in now, now that we know that the illumination works brilliantly, we can put the lights back on and just look more at how the shortcuts work. So try to stay with me. We've got at the top here the, the main window arrangement. So I've got editor I can bring up. I've got the console, yes or no. The inspector at the side over here, the browser over there, and then the different elements within the browser. That's pretty cool. I really like that. Then along the top on the number keys, we have the various tools at the top here that you can select. Uh, the listen button, the bend, the mute, paint, eraser, split, range, arrow thing. And as I move the mouse around, you can see how that changes. So it's a really fast way of changing tools. So I can pick up something and then I can change to my cutting tool. Then I can erase a bit, get back to trimming in and out again. I could also go to select and then I've got a button here, which is to merge. There, pop, so I've merged those events. Brilliant. I can also duplicate ding, 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 over there. I can zoom in and out on these two keys 
here, which is brilliant. Let's select a little drum loop here, and I'm going to hit this key, the P key, to put the, the loop around it, and then there's another key to toggle that loop on and off, which is either there or here. You can see that changing at the top. <laughs> Over here I've got to go to loop start and loop end, which this little camera here probably can't see. So over there I do, yeah, that's great. Or I've got um, return to zero over here as well. I'll go back to loop start. Add a marker. And then I can go to those different markers with the numeric pad over here. I've got Transport controls, forward rewind. <laughs> Stop again. Uh, so all sorts of things that you probably didn't even know were available, particularly on the numeric keypad, because we ignore that all the time. Whereas there's a lot of really quick ways of getting around. Because often when I'm in an editor or I'm playing on the console, I get lost as to where my uh, where the timeline is. And so a button like that going back to a marker is very, very cool. One thing that should be noted, though, is that it's not always necessarily consistent. What I mean is, let's uh, select a MIDI piece here. Let's open the editor, which I know now is the F2 key. Now I'm in the editor, and I want to select the, the paint tool. So I go to number five here, which, is, which says paint. And it's not in the editor, it's the mute tool. Hmm. So paint, which is here, is the, is the third tool, so it's actually on number three. Which is labelled here as split, because it's split in the arrange page, but in the editor, it's paint. I mean, that's not editor's key's fault, that's Studio One's fault for being inconsistent. But it does sort of demonstrate how, when you're only using a single key and a single command per key without any kind of change or modification or adjustment to that that you're not always going to be representing all the information or necessarily the right information in the right context another example t we have the the button t let's get rid of the editor let's come back over here t let's add a track for t that's good t adds a track t great to remove a track is shift t but that's not on the keyboard because they don't use any modifiers I mean they could have split this key and had add tracks for T and then put a, a color which is marked by the shift key over here to say remove track with this key but they haven't and they don't so they're sticking with their single command per key thing which is great I mean most of your commands are there everything that you need is there but they could have so easily have been a whole nother range of keys if they just included the shift key or the control key or the alt key or combinations thereof but then as i said before it does start to get a bit crowded on those keys and they have to make a decision at some point as to what they're going to do now the colors are helpful in differentiating all the different commands however there were no there was no instructions or sort of crib sheet that came with the editor's keys keyboard to tell you exactly what the colors mean I mean, obviously, the ones in the green at the top here are to do with Windows opening. The orange ones here are to do with the tool selection. But then it starts getting a little bit murky over the red keys. I mean, I've got merge and I've got duplicate, but I've also got auto scroll. I mean, is, is that a similar sort of command? I don't know that that is. I've got click as well as auto punch and locate selection and transport control. Is click a transport control? I suppose it is. I don't really know. Does it matter? I don't know. But my assumption is that perhaps someone who wants a keyboard like this is going to be someone who wants to learn more about Studio One. So perhaps isn't an expert who has already knows where all the keys are that they need to use. So a little bit of help in getting the hang of what the colors mean, how these commands are grouped together, I think would be helpful. <laughs> You've got lots of other commands as well, like 
stepping through channels, left to right, you've got showing envelopes or hiding envelopes, solo mute buttons are all there. You've got crossfade between things, so I could put a couple of things together and instantly crossfade. Uh, I've got the, uh, the loop and the toggle loops and the go to start and the markers, all that stuff is all there. All the stuff that you're gonna be using kind of all the time. So for providing a stack of shortcuts, then, you know, the keyboard is a success. And what I love about the whole concept of working with it is that you are drawn sort of out of that mouse haze. Here's my mouse, you tend to sort of end up sort of hunched and like this, stuck with this mouse and these tiny movements with your hand all the time. And you sort of come to life because you're engaging more parts of your body. So I haven't used it for a few days now for general computing duties as well as in Studio One. I feel that I've sort of adapted to the feel of the keyboard pretty much now, and it's a good experience. It is chunkier and heavier than what I'm used to, but it's still very comfortable to use. And there's certainly something to be said for having a bit of intentional travel in what you're doing. The color separation works really well. The illumination is awesome. It completely works in that regard. And the, the colouring and the style of it all is, yeah, very pleasing. At £99, you'd be hard-pressed to find a more expensive keyboard. I mean, even the Apple Magic Keyboard is only 79 quid. But of course, the specialist nature of the keyboard and the fact that it's illuminated, these do add a premium. But I can't help feeling just a, a little bit disappointed that for the price, it's not made of aluminium like the other ones in their range are. However, editor's keys are still the best value shortcut keyboard around. And the addition of backlighting is certainly an extremely useful feature. So, to summarize, it's a decent keyboard with all the shortcuts you need to run Persona Studio One effectively and quickly and easily. It's beautifully implemented, it looks great, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. It illuminates and shows you those keyboard shortcuts in a very low light situation. It gets you out of the mouse zone, it gets you working quickly and effectively and hopefully dryly in your studio with a, with a roof as opposed to where I am. And you can use it in the dark. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, love it, it works, do it. If you've got the money, you need this kind of thing. Go get yourself one. Oh,